so today I am going to talk about the effect of parity operation on the vectors. So for this consider a vector A. Consider a vector A and let parity operator P operates over it. So that means when parity operator operates over vector A, it will become minus A vector, right? But if we have cross product, then what will happen? So cross product means C is equal to A cross B. So when parity operator operates over C, that means it will change the sign of both A and B, means parity operator operates over A cross B, that means the sign of A vector will also change, also the sign of B vector will also change. And this minus minus will become plus, so it can be written as A cross B, so it is simply C. So for cross product, when P operates over C, then it will become as it is right so that means there are two types of uh, vectors on the basis of parity operation we will classify there's two types of vectors so one is called ordinary vector and this is known as the axial vector so one is the ordinary vector and another is known as axial vector. So what will happen in case of ordinary vector parity operation or the parity transformation changes sign of the vector and in case of axial vector parity operation do not change the sign of the vector so it's like a odd parity and this is like a even parity and to distinguish this axial vector we call it as the pseudo vector right this is known as pseudo vector so there is another thing which came into existence when we talk about the vectors that is the dot product and the scalar triple product so let us now consider let us now consider one is the dot product and another is the scalar triple product right so let us call a dot b and this is a scalar and let us call the scalar as say m and similarly when we take scalar triple product a dot b cross c so let us call it as another scalar n and these both are scalars this is also a scalar and this is also a scalar but if we apply parity operator over it parity operator operates over m that is a dot p then it will remain a dot b as it is or simply m means the sign will not change sign will not change but when we apply parity operator over it then 
its sign will change its sign will change sorry sign will yeah sign will change so we call it as a simple scalar and we call this as a pseudo scalar so what will happen for scalar sign will not change and for here the sign will change so this is equivalent to this thing is equivalent to what it is equivalent to even parity and this is equivalent to odd parity so let me summarize all these results so thus we conclude that that when parity operator operates over some scalar right then it will remain as it is so it is a scalar and what when parity operator operates over pseudo scalar p is this p is representing pseudo scalar then it will change its sign it is for the pseudo scalar and when parity operator operates over vector it will change the sign and it is a vector and when parity operator operates over axial vector it will not change the sign it is for the pseudo vector or axial vector right so thus scalars and pseudo vectors scalars and pseudo vectors have eigen value of p equal to plus 1 but vectors and pseudo scalars have eigen value of p as minus 1 so keeping all these things let me summarize few things from the regarding particle physics so i'm just mentioning these points so according to quantum field theory this is the first point according to quantum field theory theory parity of a fermion parity of fermion means fermion is a half integral particle integral particle or we can say that they have the half integral spin must be opposite to that of its to that of its anti particle and another point parity of a boson its integral spin is same as its anti particle is same as its anti particle another point is that photon is a vector photon is a vector particle because as it is represented by vector potential
a mu so its spin is 1 and its intrinsic parity parity is minus 1 right so that's all for this lecture